Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, at one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a lamb, it shall join its closest neighbors in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in portion to the number of people who ate it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembly, assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at midnight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. It shall, they shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do need not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over hot fire with its head and legs and internal organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. 
your loins girded your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it hurriedly it is the passover of the lord and i will pass through the land of egypt that night and i will strike down every firstborn in the land of egypt both human beings and animals on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The bread shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 116, verse 1, and 10 through 17 in unison. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I have called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have fed me. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, old Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. Jesus came to Simon Peter and said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you, for Jesus knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After Jesus had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, Jesus said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, so that you also should go as I have done to you, do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than those who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. seated. My sermon is rather short, so I'm going to prefix it with a little bit of a liturgical lesson. Uh, at the time of ritual um, refurbishing at the last century, there were two schools of thought. One was that we should do things the way continental Rome does it, and one was that we should do it the way they did it in England just before the Reformation. I tend to be one that says we should do it the way they did it in England just before the Reformation, not follow uh, the dictates of the Second Council of Trent. 
So Percy Diemer was a great hero of that. And so why I mention all this is that at the end of the liturgy, there's a part that you're not used to. So don't be thrown. I know I threw a few of you. Uh, we will be doing the washing and stripping of the altar, after the stripping of the altar, the washing and drying of the altar, which uh, in continental Europe was done sort of after everybody left. But in the Sarum rite, it was done at the end of the stripping of the altar. And uh, in the office books for the Church of England Sarum Rite, it's still there. And uh, I'm used to doing that. And it sort of brings a circle to the meaning of the night. And so uh, we will be doing that tonight. But you'll probably never do it again. <laughs> but uh, you'll experience it tonight. And therefore, here are my words. Tonight is a night of profound meanings. Meanings reflecting highs and lows, joys and sorrows, often opposite meanings shown in the context of this one night. A night of gospel light and of profound darkness. All our, the ways we worship go much deeper than we often realize. There is a language spoken by word, and there is a language spoken by ritual and action. We do not even remember, oftentimes, the language of action. We just go through the motions, sometimes not really knowing why. But the language of action is as important in telling the story as the language we speak. Tonight is one of those nights when the language of action speaks profoundly. Eucharist shared a new commandment, the washing of feet, the journey to the garden, the stripping of the altar. Actions and not just words. Tonight the words we say and the things we do speak of too many opposites held in the gospel events at the Last Supper, the time in the garden, and the time of the trial. Here are just a few. Gathers, friends gather for a goodbye dinner. The institution of the Eucharist the mystery of farewell, and the welcome of sacrament. Love as commandment, hate as practice, service as love, abuse as contempt, washing as hospitality, spitting as rejection, Jesus as temple, and the temple's destruction, our highest joys, and our deepest sorrows. These are only samplings of the teachings and things we observe and remember in this night of word and action, a night different than any other night. Mondi comes from the word mandatum, which means commandment, and highlights the command to love Jesus to love Jesus, and issues at the meal, yet in the stripping of the altar and in the beating of the altar, we remember that the Prince of Love received hate this night for the love he shared. In the washing of feet, he gives us an example of humble service. While in the washing of the altar, we remember that that service he received was spitting by his abusers. Jesus reminds us that Jesus is the new temple. And in the stripping of the altar, we remember Jesus' prediction of the destruction of the temple in 66 AD and of the stripping of Jesus, the living temple, in the courtyards. We celebrate with joy the gift of the Eucharist, the bread of the life of our journey. But it is mixed in our minds 
For we know that the meal only leads to the garden, to the trial, and to the cross. Tonight we are called by word and action to remember all of these, not to run from any of them, instead to hold them in prayer, in reflection, and in memory. For they are not opposites, instead they are signposts, signposts of the deep love of God, God's love for us and for our redemption. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Arise, if you are able. Fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God come not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. We all need to remember his example but none stand in more need of this reminder than those whom the Lord has called to ordained ministry. Therefore, I invite you who share in the royal priesthood of Christ to come forward that I may recall whose servant I am by following the example of my master, but come remembering his admonition that what will be done for you is also to be done by you to others. For a servant is not greater than his master, nor is the one who sent him greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Those in, who wish, which have their feet washed are invited forward at this time. The remainder of the congregation may be seated.
God, apostles, prophets, martyrs, and servants, to pray for the church and for all humankind, saying, Come, Lord Jesus. For refugees, for the homeless, and for all who have nowhere to lay their head, we pray. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For those unable to eat at the Lord's table or at any other table, we pray. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For the body of Christ, fractured in a world of violence and war, we pray. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For those who betray and for those whom they betray, we pray. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For all in any need, especially Michelle, Barbara, Matt, Ed, Virginia, Christopher, Bob and Gail, Sally, Reggie, Timothy, Pauline, Edna, Elle, Kate, Kevin, Elle, Donna, Chris, Emery, Kathy, Ryan, James, Charmaine, Weed, and any others we now name. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. For ourselves who gather to celebrate the Lord's Passover in the bread we eat and the cup we drink, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. For this congregation of St. Matthews. Come, Lord Jesus. Almighty God, we recall the wonders you worked for our ancestors and we marvel at the love shown us by your Son. Hear us as we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good thy vows unto the Most High.
please stand if you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he may became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. And for those who are joining us online, we pray, in union, O Lord, with the faithful of, at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with earnest wish that we may always be united with you. And since we cannot receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gift of God for the people of God. Body of Christ.
Come like one who has no strength, lost among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the depths of the pit, in dark places and in the earth. in the land of destruction? Will your wonders be known in the dark or your righteousness in the country where all is forgotten? But as for me, O Lord, I cry to you for help. 
In the morning my prayer comes before you. Lord, why have you rejected me? Why have you hidden me from your face? Sing with me, remain here with me. Ocean pray, ocean pray. Sing with me, remain here with me. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Ever since my youth I have been wretched and at the point of death. I have borne your terrors with a troubled mind. Your blazing anger has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. They summoned me all day long like a flood. They encompass me on every side. My friend and my neighbor, you have put away from me, and darkness is my only companion. continues with the washing of the altar as found on the wheat colored insert. On the Mount of Olives I pray to the Father, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Thy will be done. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt, thy will be done. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the witness of your Apostle and Evangelist Matthew to the Gospel of your Son, our Savior. And we pray that after his example, we may with ready wills and hearts obey the calling of our Lord to follow him. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Stay here with me. Now you shall see the multitude that shall encompass me. You shall flee, but I go to be sacrificed for you.
Lo, we have seen he has no form nor comeliness. There is no beauty in him. He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, and by his stripes we are healed. Lord God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, gave his body to be whipped and his face to be spit upon, give us grace to accept joyfully the suffering of the present time, confident of the glory that shall be revealed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Lying people encompassed me, they scourged me without a cause, but you, O Lord, my defender, avenge my cause. Thank you. 